It's August, but it's hard to believe that many of the things that will be shaping our winter are already coming into place. In this video today, we're going to look at what's going on out here in the Pacific. We're going to talk about the ocean temperatures. We're also going to look really far to the north at the Arctic, and we're going to talk about what that might do to our winter this year. A quick sea ice update as well, plus we're going to look at the snow that's going to be falling across parts of Siberia as we head through September. This is the weekly update, so if you're a weather geek like me, I hope you'll subscribe, come back, and check these videos out as we progress through the fall into winter. If you're brand new, I'm Travis. I used to be a chief meteorologist years ago on TV, so if you're looking for a weather source here on YouTube, come on back. Let's start with what's going on here into the Pacific. Of course, we're talking about, you know, some tropical development still going on here, but let's look at the ocean temperatures. Right now, the Pacific setting in an ENSO neutral phase. We don't have a strong El Nino nor La Nina. Some may argue that it might be just a little bit cooler than average across this part of the Eastern Pacific as we get some upwelling here with that easterly northeast flow and some warmer temperatures back across the West Pacific. Some of the data from NOAA shows the ENSO neutral phase fading just a little bit. And look, the blue, that represents more of a La Nina developing as we move now. This would be October, November, and December. And then weakening back again as we head toward the middle of winter, back toward that neutral phase. For the U.S., this type of setup usually means warmer and drier conditions across the south, colder and stormier conditions across the northern tier. And of course, because all of this may be temporary, I think it puts some variability in the forecast this winter. But because we're not looking at a super strong La Nina, I don't know that we're looking at a really warm winter across the south just because we're seeing ENSO neutral conditions. Another thing that really drives the weather is how warm the temperatures are across the North Pacific and how cold it starts to get across Alaska. Of course, if you tighten that pressure gradient up, we've seen this last couple of years where we have this screaming jet that's now moving to Alaska, starts to drop south, and we pound it here into the Northwest, also into parts of Western Canada. That usually leads to really locking that cold air up to the North. This year may be different. We've not talked about this much, but this is the PDO, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. And if you look at this, in July and August, we are near some of the lowest values that we've seen on this. The PDO came in at a negative four, and that's pretty close to a record. And there's a lot of things that go into this index. It usually means that there are cooler waters along the west coast of North America, and usually it means warmer waters across the North Pacific, which is what we're seeing and it actually reinforces La Nina. So when you combine this with what looks to be an ENSO neutral phase over the winter, I think you start to really ramp up the La Nina. And that could mean maybe stormier conditions across the northern Rockies and drier conditions across the southern states with more of a La Nina setup. Another thing that I think you got to watch too is the weakening polar vortex around the Arctic. And here's one of the reasons you actually, if you take all of the ice combined compared last year to this year, there is less. But there's one small thing that I'm looking at that I think is interesting, and that's the ice cover that you see north of Siberia. The southern extent of this ice is pretty far to the south, and it's probably going to continue to melt. But look at where we were last year. Really, at this date, there wasn't any ice in this region. However, one could argue maybe there was a little more over here to the north of Siberia. But with overall less ice across this region, that generally means that maybe your polar vortex as we head into the winter doesn't get as strong because you don't end up with as much ice, especially over here. So warmer temperatures would disrupt that polar vortex, cause it to weaken. And that does probably the opposite of what you think. That allows our polar jet to get wavy as we start to see this thing really bust up. And that could mean some pretty big storms, especially if you can push this cold air south, which it likely would based on a very wavy Arctic jet. That's just one of the things. Another thing too is the cold air. You have to have it and the models are still coming into alignment that we start to see some snowpack building across Siberia and Eurasia as we head into September into October. There is a correlation with how much snow you see and how cold it gets across the polar area as we head into October. You get that albedo effect, the reflection of the sun coming in, and of course, across the land masses where it gets the coldest, that's where the heat goes away. And then as that air moves across the Arctic, if you can keep this place frozen for longer, especially on this side of the Arctic Ocean, you can see how cold air can easily spill into North America. And hey, if you really disrupt your polar vortex, you start moving things south, this could be one heck of a winter. This is your typical La Nina year, a strong blocking high pressure back here. And you know, with that PDO that's also looking pretty negative, I could see that happening. This looks a lot different. 
I just don't know how this is going to set up this strong, especially as we, we've seen this huge polar jet that just swings through here with a lot of Arctic air that builds across Alaska and that temperature difference to the south with that warm ocean. We've just been seeing a screaming jet into the northwest. Your typical La Nina year, though, says, hey, you're going to get a strong polar jet that goes up and over that high and dump a lot of cold air down into North America and keep it warm and dry across the south. This type of setup, I think, would bring some pretty good storms to the east coast. And keep in mind, this year, we're not looking at a strong La Nina. I know I'm showing you this, but the PDO is pretty low, and we're looking at at least ENSO neutral conditions as we head through the winter, and then going back to strong neutral as we head towards February, March, and April. There is some cold air out there right now building up across the North Pole, and some of that cold air did break off and move south. Of course, it modified as our front pushed all the way south as far as Florida. That's why you're feeling so nice across the lower 48. And if you look at these temperatures, I think I'm looking right in here, especially across the north slope of Alaska into Siberia, because I want to know how much more melting of the ice are we going to see before we start to freeze back up. Now, as we head into September, there will be more melting. But that's going to stop, especially as we get toward the end of the month into October and we start that freeze cycle again as we start to really cool off across the high latitudes as that sun gets less powerful day by day. And we've definitely been cold across the north slope. There's been some snow across this region, some rain and snow and temperatures over the next couple of days, not warming up very much. Places like Barrow up towards Dead Horse, probably not getting out of the 30s. And you can see how that cold air is really starting to take shape across the great north. A long way to go before we get to winter. Clearly, we've got to watch the tropics still as we're dealing with hurricane season right now. The MJO phase moving over toward a more favorable environment to see hurricanes, I think, especially as we get into September. So we're going to have to watch the Gulf. And I think you got to watch where this front is dying out, too, and more fronts as they move south because there's more cool air on the way, at least across a good chunk of the central and eastern United States over the coming weeks. Bottom line, I think we see a stormier east coast this year. I think we see more snowstorms, especially as you get into the mid-Atlantic, into the northeast, just because of the setup. I think it's going to be warmer across the south. That La Nina influence is going to be there. And then across the northern plains, the upper Midwest, I think we're going to get some real shots of cold, but you might miss the moisture. Doesn't mean you're not going to see some snowstorms. I think the Pacific Northwest is going to stay active. We've just seen this strong, screaming Pacific jet. I look at these teleconnections like the PDO. We look at what's happening in the Arctic with the Arctic Oscillation, El Nino, the ENSO Index. Is it going to be a La Nina or El Nino? The last couple of years have just proven that that strong Pacific jet just is going to kick in. I think that happens again this year, despite what all of these signals are saying. And across the Southwest with at least neutral to La Nina conditions, you know, you guys are really influenced by an El Nino setup, right? You get that strong southern jet moving in. Without that, you just don't get as much moisture. Your winter storms don't get as strong. I'm not saying you're going to go snowless or rainless through the winter as we enter the rainy season. It just doesn't look like a huge big year. Remember, I think it was 1997 we had a big El Nino year, and you probably remember others if you're across this part of the country. It just doesn't look like that to me right now. I could be completely wrong about all of this. I reserve the right to be wrong, especially when we're looking out this far. Come on. All right. If you enjoyed this, come back. See you next time.